Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. By now, we've gotten pretty used to the idea of incredibly high-resolution displays in tiny amounts of space. I mean, the cell phone in your pocket probably packs in as many or possibly more pixels than the 60-inch TV in your living room. But the never-ending quest for higher and higher pixel densities stops for absolutely no one, which is why Apple has made headlines recently for sinking a ton of money into making its own micro-LEDs. But what are those? And what's the point when current mobile display tech seems to be serving us just fine? Well, micro-LEDs bear a resemblance to the organic LEDs, or OLEDs, that have become popular over the last few years. Unlike traditional LCD screens, each pixel on an OLED-based display can generate its own light, meaning that there is no need for a backlight that adds thickness and can wash the image out or make its colors look uneven. The result is an accurate, clear picture with very deep blacks and contrast ratios that are marketed as infinite. Not to mention a lower power draw, which is key for battery-dependent mobile devices. OLEDs are great, but they're kind of fatally flawed in a sense, because the organic part of the OLED refers to carbon-based molecules that deteriorate over time. So the pixels themselves, especially the ones displaying white, can suffer from burn-in, as some owners of OLED screens have found if they spend lots of time playing games with static UI elements or watching the same TV channel with a logo in the bottom corner. Micro-LED, by contrast, uses inorganic materials, specifically gallium nitride, which not only lasts longer than the materials in OLED screens, but it isn't susceptible to burn-in, meaning that micro-LED offers the benefits of OLED without the common drawbacks. And it can be made much brighter as well, while using less power for the same brightness level. Micro-LED screens are also more versatile in that they are easier to manufacture in whatever sizes and shapes that you want. Samsung notably demonstrated this at CES 2018 with a 146-inch prototype television that it calls The Wall, made up of smaller, borderless micro-LED panels. So in the future, we might finally break through the 65-inch barrier, you know, where TVs stopped getting bigger because they became impractical to transport home from the local Best Buy? I mean, imagine this. Instead of buying a whole new television set because of one patch of dead pixels, you could just go swap in a new modular panel and get on with your mindless consumption. So because of all of these benefits, micro-LEDs are interesting to more than just the traditional display manufacturers. So Apple reportedly has a team of engineers working on implementing them into its own devices. But they'll probably be starting out small with like something like an Apple Watch being a prime candidate for a finished product with micro-LEDs a few years down the road. A few years down the road, hold on a minute. This sounds great, why wait so long? Good question. The biggest drawback right now is manufacturing complexity. It takes a long time to put together a micro LED display as they have to be built one subpixel at a time. Think about how many of those there would be on a standard 4K TV. So as is the case with a lot of cool sounding emerging technologies, we're going to have to wait a bit before we're all walking around with micro LED gadgets in our pockets. But since Apple, Samsung, and LG all own multiple patents relating to micro-LEDs, it appears that the giants of the tech world are serious about releasing displays with pixels that don't burn. Assuming, of course, that you have money that you can burn. Are you interested in computer science? Then check out Brilliant, a problem-solving website that teaches you to think like a computer scientist. Instead of passively listening to lectures, you get to master concepts by solving fun and challenging problems. And Brilliant provides the tools and framework that you need to tackle these challenges. 
brilliant, thought-provoking content based around breaking up complexities into bite-sized, understandable chunks will lead you from curiosity to mastery. And you'll be in the company of over five and a half million members who share your curiosity and love for math and science. So what are you waiting for? You can support TechWiki and learn more about Brilliant by clicking on the link in the video description or going to brilliant.org slash Linus Tech Tips and signing up for free. The first 200 people to go to the link will get 20% off of an annual premium subscription. So be sure to check it out. So thanks for watching, guys. Dislike, like, check out our other channels, leave a comment or subscribe. Wait, leave a comment if you have a suggestion for a future video. And don't forget to subscribe. And you can hit the notification bell while you're at it.